This is the circuit I am working with on this uh, here two coil Bedini motor. I'm going to show you in a sec. Alrighty, let's uh, show you this thing running and uh, I'm going to show you the uh, some tuning tricks that I've been uh, doing uh, both of course the oscilloscope helps a bunch but also just by using one of these uh, clamp-on meters um, it's this one only measures AC but it's picking up stuff and it's giving me about a quarter of the reading of what it truly is thereabouts um, so it's a good tool for tuning Anyway, uh, what do I got going here? Uh, basically, the gap on this uh, coil to the magnets right now, I'm finding about an eighth of an inch is pretty darn good. Where it's not pulling too much, but you know, you got it close enough to where it's uh, getting a lot of magnetic pulsation. Um, so eighth of an inch on the gap with my particular setup seems to work real good. Um, these two are lined up, like I said on the other video, um, so they're always hitting the magnet. Um, this is going to be showing the output to the charge battery, which is a old marine battery which came to me at zero volts, and you can see it's. Uh, back up to 12 volts now so that one's, <laughs> that one's been working good too so <laughs> there's another case of saving a battery anyway uh, I'm running it off of two garden batteries over there um, this is the voltage of the charge one getting the charge here's the voltage of the running batteries uh, I've got um, basically four 25 ohm pots here for real fine tuning and this is a 1k deal here I got 500 ohms between these right now right here Let me turn those all up so that's a real conservative setting so the thing's gonna run kinda slow at first so I'm gonna show you the various speeds this thing can do and the amount of draw it's gonna take uh, this meter is showing the draw, the draw amps off of the uh, run battery so anyway uh, as far as pups uh, so I was taking some notes earlier and when this is it 45 here that's about a um, almost a uh, 200 milliamp output so you know we're we're around a hundred milliamps now that bass is probably lower than that I bet but yeah I'm drawing about 230 once this thing gets up and running All right, so this thing's up and running about top speed pretty much. And um, you can see we're drawing about 230 235 uh, milliamps thereabouts and um, it's probably putting putting 90 into that guy I bet at this point, maybe 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 100 milliamps. Um, it's not a huge charge. I don't know if you can see the oscilloscope real good, but I've got basically uh, six spikes going on here, and I'd say the RPM is about 120 at this point. That's uh, a real conservative setting. All right, right now I've got about 400 ohms on this thing. You can see how this. Uh, this meter's going up. Definitely drawing more juice. 
uh, you'll see this will be going up a little, a little faster. And now I've got five spikes on the oscilloscope, so I'm gonna I'm lowering the resistance. I just switched over. Now if you can see that on the oscilloscope, here I want to make this point as far as how I uh, tune these things. Uh, I don't think I can do it. Well, you notice this drop because we just went from five spikes down to four spikes, and that's uh, one of these steps I notice on on the tuning process. So this is going to be the least amount it's going to draw, but we want to get a little more output from it. So I'm lowering the resistance. see this is going up pretty good so right now uh, we're drawing you know almost double what we were doing before so I I've almost lowered it 200 ohms so from 5 down to 3 should be somewhere around 300 ohms Alright, so you can see it's going a little faster, um, see if I can zoom you in on this uh, oscilloscope. So right now you can see we've got there's basically four spikes here. You can't see these spikes because I have to turn this down so you can see it. Uh, and what's going to happen when you see that little that little blip right there? That's transitioning from four spikes down to three. And watch what the meters do when that happens. So I'm going to zoom back out here. Okay, so we're basically on three spikes right now and you see we're at uh, you know about 380 there and 36 here I'm gonna add resistance to where we go back to four spikes okay now you see how it jumped up so that that jumped up a lot and so did this so those are sort of the efficiency zones, or I guess is what I'm calling them, between the various spikes. And there's there's quite a range, like I'm on four spikes, I'm going to lower the resistance a lot. And you can see we haven't jumped back to five spikes yet. Need a little more than 100 ohms to do that. Let's see. Yeah, we're right in that zone, but so anyway, I guess my point is is that there's a range in any any given RPM, kind of right before you bridge between the two is is where you get the most output. But it's it's you know you, you almost want to balance balance the two I guess a little bit so right now we're just about to jump to the new zone new spikes and 
and it, you know, suddenly got more efficient, but yet it's not putting quite as much out. All right, we are at three spikes now. And keep lowering the resistance. We were at 300, so 250. See, I can get a lot more juice out of it. You see how this number is going up a lot faster so it, you know it's putting more pressure on the battery for charging but it definitely draws more okay I'm gonna try to transition down to two spikes I'm gonna have to reset it okay I'm gonna try to get it to go to two spikes here reason I keep stopping is because I, I don't adjust this this uh, 1k pot while it's running because it's a crummy one and I keep burning them out when I do that so I make an adjust I turn it off make an adjustment there and then fine-tune it with the smaller pots that's why I keep doing the stops okay so can't really see the oscilloscope I don't think but Pay attention to these two meters and see how it drops. Right there, we just went to two spikes. You can see there's there's another RPM shift. And a rattle. <laughs> You can kind of see the <laughs> how that it affects the RPM, the efficiency, the output. So, you know, you can use one of these meters to kind of find where those spike points are if you don't have an oscilloscope, and then uh, tune the thing accordingly, watching your meter. So, right now we're drawing about, you know, 600 milliamps and putting out I'd say 220 maybe 240 right now you can see that guy's going pretty fast and we can make it go even faster if I drop down to one but then I get scared because <laughs> I think the thing is going to fly apart <laughs> so I might do it briefly for you guys Now we're, we're drawing almost almost an amp now. See the motor slows down until we get to that next point, so <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mess with it. All right, we're gonna go for the max RPM here. <laughs> Let's hope nothing blows up. <laughs> Got my safety glasses on. All right. All There it goes. You see that sucker jamming pretty good. I get nervous. <laughs> anyway. I don't want to let it run too long there. Until I like totally tape the thing off. 
get everything bolted down and securely and so. stuff. So, anywho, uh, I guess uh, that's pretty much what I want to show you. Show you this thing running. Kind of these tuning tricks, getting one of these uh, clamp around meters has really been handy. You know, you can clamp around your your other draws and it does show you, like here's the ground, it's drawn, you know, 12 compared to the 60 something, whatever. And of course if you have an oscilloscope that helps a whole bunch. Anyway, um, I don't know, I'm getting about a, you know, 120 volt spikes it seems like using this SER and covering batteries and having a bunch of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See ya.